What is our third main topic today? John, our third main topic comes to us from Tyler. Hey, John and everyone else. My most anticipated movie each year, it was supposed to release Avatar 2, and I hope they make 4 and 5. It is being reported that Avatar 2 needs to make $2 billion to just break even. I'm 99.9% .9 certain it will reach $1 billion, but I feel it's unlikely to reach $2 billion. Only five movies have. If it doesn't break even, how do you think it will affect the remainder of the franchise? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. Okay, so I looked up, and I, I found out that the only five movies to break $2 billion, Titanic, Avatar, Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Avengers Infinity Wars, and Avengers Endgame. Do you think Avatar 2 will join them? Okay, number one. No, I do not think that Avatar will make $2 billion. I, I've said this forever. I, I've said it forever. This movie will make a ton of money. It will make not. It will not make the first Avatar. The, the, the time passed. I mean, they could have done this seven years ago and maybe, but it's still going to be a huge success. It's going to be a mass, mass success. I don't think it'll hit $2 billion. I hope I'm wrong. I love seeing movies come out and be super successful. So maybe, who knows? All right. John, some people would say to me, what the hell? A, a movie that requires $2 billion to break even? Where's this coming from? Well, here's where this is coming from. Because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. So this comes from the folks over at Variety who wrote the following. Okay, so how expensive? This is in Variety, remember. How expensive is Avatar 2? Well, early reports have claimed that the production budget alone was in the $250 million range. But the director, James Cameron isn't willing to give a hard number just yet. The only answer Cameron would give about the sequel's budget when asked by GQ magazine was the following. It's very fucking expensive. Cameron apparently told Disney and 20th Century Fox Studios executives that his sequel budget was so high, it represented the worst business case in movie history. According to the director's estimates, you have to be the third or fourth highest grossing film in history that is your threshold. That is your break-even. Let me read that last part again. According to the director's estimate, James Cameron's estimate, you have to be the third or fourth highest grossing film in history. That is your threshold. Okay. So from that, let's go over to my screen here, Jonathan. Okay, third or fourth. Well, the third highest grossing film in history is Titanic at $2.2 billion. The fourth highest grossing film in history, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, at $2 billion. So you're talking about $2.1 billion. That's, and that's why you're seeing all these headlines running around right now that James Cameron is saying this movie needs to make $2 billion to break even. Even though James Cameron never said $2 billion, he said the third or fourth highest grossing films in history. All right. I am calling bullshit. <laughs> uh, there is no way at all in the world that this movie is going to require $2 billion to break even. There, there's just not. Why? Well, let's go into the uh, chicken scratch can't be a classroom here for a second, shall we? As we break this down and, and look at what would this fundamentally mean for this, uh, for this movie, the types of numbers that they're throwing around. What does this actually mean? All right, are we able to get that, Jonathan? Yeah, you might have to reconnect it. Yeah, give me give me one second here. So, okay, here we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, so here's what this would fundamentally have to mean for this movie as I bring up my thing here. There we go. All right, let's look at what the numbers break down as and, and how it kind of all work out. All right, so... When you're looking at how much money a movie needs to make, okay, this is just some general stuff here, okay? And forgive my chicken scratch. I'm not really good at writing in the first place, but especially on a tablet here. So you got to, in talking about what is the profitability mark, what is that break even mark? You got to look at a couple things. First of all, you got to look at total uh, cost, okay? Total cost. Total cost equals your uh, production budget, right? Plus, Marketing. Now, this is something they taught me when I was at AMC, right? They taught me this when I was, at, this is what AMC theaters told me when I was working there, that this is not an exact science, but if you want a general rule of thumb about how much money, generally speaking, there are always exceptions that a movie needs to make in order to be break even or be profitable. 
this is the thing. You got to take your total cost. Then you look at your total income. All right. How much money did it make? Well, your total income equals box office minus 33%. There are a bunch of people out there that tell you it's 50%, that, that the theaters keep 50%, 60%. I don't know where people get that from, but the head executives at AMC Theaters always told me at the end of the day, when it all shakes out, it roughly equals about one third, okay? So you take your total cost, your total income. So if your total income is say... $21, right? And you minus 33%, then roughly you're going to eat, end up with $14. Okay. So if you put out a movie to make 21 bucks, you're actually going to get 14 of that back. All right, fine. James Cameron here is saying that this movie is going to take $2.1 billion to break even. Well, then what does that essentially mean? He's essentially saying, so we need to make enough money that if you minus 33% from that, we needed to make enough money that we will be left with $1.4 billion. That we need to be left with $1.4 billion. It's like, okay, r really? Let's say they go on the most expensive marketing campaign in the history of film. Let's say $300 million. That would be the most expensive marketing campaign ever. So if their marketing, I'll just say with an M, equaled 300 million, most expensive ever, that means that your production budget, P for production, was $1.1 billion. Are you fucking kidding me? No movie got made with a production budget of $1.1 <laughs> billion. For, for $2.1 billion to be the break-even point here, again, this is a rough generality, okay? You're talking about a movie that had to have a production budget if they had a $300 million marketing budget. You're talking about a movie that would need a $1.1 billion budget. That is preposterous. And there is no way that is true. We were just talking the other day about Fast 10's budget is 340 million. And that's one of the most, that's a top four most expensive film ever no made. No studio would ever green light that. No studio would come no. close to green light. No. You're talking about a movie that would be close to the three X of the next most expensive ever movie ever made, like almost three times. <clears throat> So why is James Cameron saying most exp it have to come in the top three or four most profitable movies or, or biggest box office movies of all time? Here's why. Because he didn't mean worldwide. He didn't mean worldwide. He was not saying that the movie needed to make, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.1 billion. Because if we can go back to, the, to my other screen there, Jonathan, the other, the oh, other yeah. one I have there. If we now we look at say domestic numbers okay not worldwide numbers so three and four would be avatar domestically and spider-man no way home avatar domestically made 785 million spider-man no way home made 814 million so you're talking about 800 million dollars all right now if you look at those numbers you would have to be a ridiculously expensive movie to need to make 800 million dollars to break even i've never heard of that before but this becomes more believable because now you're talking about a movie that has somewhere between a 300 and 400 million dollar budget, which again would be one of the most, if not the most perhaps expensive film ever made. So if now he's coming out and saying when he means a fourth or third biggest grossing film of all time, it makes a, it's still astronomical. It's still insane numbers. But I think he's talking about needing to make 800, 850, that sort of thing to break even, not $2.1 billion. <laughs> Again, I go back to his actual comment and quote mm -hmm. in the article there. He did, didn't say it would cost $2 billion. He said it has to be the third or fourth most, yeah, biggest film of all time. I think he was talking about the, the domestic numbers. That makes a lot more sense because there's no way in heaven or hell that any studio 
anywhere. It doesn't matter how much money the first Avatar made. No studio greenlit a $1 billion production budget movie. Right. Not a chance. So again, I think he was referring to, to domestic. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Manscaped. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim up your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use the code CAMPIA for free shipping and 20% off. And this year I am so thankful for Manscaped because like most of you guys, I used to use Neanderthalic Dark Age methods to trim my balls. Not anymore, thanks to Manscaped. It's time for all of us to give thanks to Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, Performance Boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. The heart of the package, their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the promo code CAMPIA. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Anyway, Cliff, you see the breakdown and the numbers. What do you think James Cameron was talking about? What makes more sense to you? Well, the other the other thing that makes sense is when you meet these directors, they don't always know the numbers. Like they know their sliver of things. So, you know, he's talking movie numbers, but he may not actually know what certain numbers are. So he's just sort of saying, well, I know Avatar made this amount of money. And so and Endgame made this. So, you know, a lot of times directors will, will throw out numbers kind of at random, but not really know the specific number. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm a little shocked that something got on the internet and was misleading. Uh, in any way <laughs> that never happens because uh, that's usually doesn't happen but the other you know the other thing about the the you know your numbers are great but then there's there's a whole nother layer to this which is underneath this theatrical umbrella you have all of this other income that this movie you know the avatar's got a themed land in florida and there's going to be marketing. There's going to be, product, you know, there's going to be all these other things all feed into, even if it didn't make its money back theatrically, there's all this ancillary income that Avatar makes. Um, and, and so I, I think it's a combination of he's probably talking domestic. He's probably talking about numbers he doesn't totally know off the top of his head. I mean, he's probably just doing sort of an off the cuff interview. Um, and then you know, don't worry too much about Disney. They'll they'll they're going to do fine. Um, they're they're going to make money, and and they've got all this other stuff that they're going to sell you with blue people and and whatever else. So, uh, yeah. I, but I think that I think the domestic is probably the most logical explanation um, because worldwide is it's yeah. But no studio would ever go like even half a billion dollars would be really hard. And that would make it the most expensive yeah. film ever made. Now, now I'm talking confused, about having to double that. Right. Now I'm confused about why your 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 viewer, your writer hopes that they make four and five, but it's clearly not interested in three. <laughs> yeah, just skip over three, go right to and five. He's like, I hope they make four and five. Anyway, now. Rob, you're seeing this. I don't know. Do you think James Cameron was was literally saying I, that this movie needs to make two billion dollars to break even? I think what he was because this has never been one movie. You know, when they greenlit this, it was a series of films. And they've been in development for, and they've been doing things. First of all, Cameron does all the R and D for the industry when it comes to effects. He's always pushing the boundaries. They He's kind made, of picked up the mantle from George Lucas they, for that. Yeah, but they always, but they even made things like they made their own diving equipment. His brother made his own diving equipment when they made the abyss. So you could see the actors faces. So they're, they created brand new underwater motion capture technology that didn't exist before. They've had a writer's room working on this for years. I mean, this film, the development costs, I don't even want to know what it costs, what they've been spending before they went into actual production. And when they went into production, from what I understand, they shot the live action for Avatar 2 and 3 all at the same time. Like they continued it. So he's probably thinking when he says Avatar, 
I think he's thinking of the entirety of what they've been doing. Like he said, he doesn't know if he's going to make three and four. It depends on how, or, or four and five or whatever. Yeah, it depends how two and three do. Two and th- yeah, two and th- so two and three, have, have, I think in his mind, are all one big project because I don't think he makes that delineation. And when he's thinking about numbers, he's thinking total numbers. So, But why would he say we need to be the th- th- third or fourth biggest film in history? You think he's he means that? It didn't sound like he was talking about two movies put I together. I know, but I don't, I, like you said, like Cliff said, I, I, I agree that he, when he's thinking about this, I don't even think he thinks of these as separate movies at this point. It's it's one big thing, kind of like how, you know, when they were shooting Matrix Reloaded and Matrix Revolutions. I mean, all that, once you're doing something like that, it's all kind of one big So he doesn't project. know in his head anymore that there's no, two movies? No, I think he does, but I just don't think that he's, I think he's thinking about the total expenditure. Well, yeah, it's hard to, it would be hard to break that down as to, well, what's three and what's two and what did I spend on this and yeah. what, what's the, this budget? And he's been working on this. I mean, they've been working on this movie pre-Disney merger. I mean, he's been, they were spending money on this film. I don't even know. I mean, he's been working on this, what, eight years? In addition to all the other things he's been doing? So I can't even imagine how much money they've spent on this film. Wasn't this supposed to come out opposite the last Star Wars movie at one point? Yeah, they, like they were going to be on the same date and they had to, and then it was like, oh, Avatar well, moved. I, I think his deal. initial release date was like 2017 or 2018 yeah. was yeah. the initial one that they said. I, again, And that was way pre-Fox yeah. merger. I, I still think the most likely scenario here is that James Cameron knows exactly what he was saying. He was saying, but but in saying that you need the fourth or third biggest hit of all time, I think he was thinking in terms of U.S. domestic box office. I, right. I think, because again, at there, when you're talking $800 million to break even, that makes a lot more sense. And that would still make it one of the most expensive that, films of all if time. If it was worldwide, that would be almost triple the highest uh, budget ever. Yeah. Which would have been adjusted for inflation is like $400 million for 1963's Cleopatra, which almost bankrupt Fox. So yeah, three I, times yeah. that. And it could be a little of both where because he has spent a bunch of money on two and three, that he's looking at it as two better make a lot of money because if two doesn't make a lot of money, I'm in trouble on three. Yeah, and then four and five don't get made. And then four and five don't get made at all. So I don't know, guys. I, I just think what is clear here is that James Cameron did not say it was going to cost $2 billion to be. It, that, that is the reports <laughs> going around. That is the headlines going around. But he did not say that. He said third or fourth biggest. <laughs> and I think when you break down the numbers and actually look at the math, he's probably most likely either talking about a couple of films combined or he's just talking about the domestic box office, which would line up. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? When you hear his comments and statements, how do you take it? Do you actually think that Avatar 2 needs to make $2.1 billion at the box office to be to break even? I, I don't know. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.